right? Not only the police car, I hear the police. Congo is a police state. The police have a power. In America, the U.S. Constitution said, we the people, I was like, what? We the people, blah, 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 blah. In Congo, it's more like, a, we the police. <laughs> We're gonna tell you what to do, and we can kill you if we want to, right? It doesn't say exactly that, but that's how it looks like. I hit the police car. Next thing you know, I have to run. But people came on see Makaya, Kiangana. We have to get out of here. My driver, no, no, my instructor got hurt. I never heard from my instructor again because when they got him, I don't know what they do to him. You know, nobody ever see him again. So for me, I ran to the boat. You might think I came to the United States, fly, right? Or you fly, zoo, we got this here, and then you land to the United States. No, I came in the boat because I ran to the ship. I came to the boat. And the police went to my house, destroyed my house, shooting in the house. Why do you shoot him? They killed my little brother when he was eight years old. They went to hospital and they killed my dad. So my uh, mom and my uh, three brothers became homeless. While I was in the uh, Atlantic Ocean like a slave, right? Coming to the United States. So in the process, trying to run away from Congo, we landed in Argentina. Argentina said, no, we don't want him here because when they tried to hand me over to Congolese government in Argentina. So I left Argentina. We went to Brazil. Brazil trying, trying to do the same thing. So, you know, I can stay here because by then I cannot go back to Congo. I'm first born in a family. We can cause the problems as we go older. They make sure if they're coming after your family, but they kill the first born, especially if you were a man. So you don't have the idea that I have it today, hoping to go back in the Congo and they make a difference. You see, if I can convince my mom, because my mom said to me, my mom sitting there, she said, Makaya, if you think I was to go back in the Congo, I'll kill you myself. <laughs> you know, I'll kill you myself so they don't kill you before I do. <laughs> That's my mom. So, uh, politics in the Congo, it's a democracy. What? We don't have democracy. What is that? So, we do not have that. So, I came to the United States in 2002. I landed in, uh, in New Orleans. Since I didn't have any family here, I, don't, I didn't speak a language. You know, you know, it was freezing. I mean, you know, 50 degrees in the Congo, I'm wearing a coat. <laughs> like, oh, I'm freezing, right? Can you see that? Because normal temperature is 120. You see, 120 in the normal. 80 is like, oh, but what happened today? Just 80? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, 50 degrees is usually in the dry season because that's when it's a little, you know, chilly, like a fall or things like that. So I, I came to the US, um, they put me in a Bullock's County, Pennsylvania. We just know where Bullock's County is. Cool. So put a Pumla in a children's home. We don't call it children's home. What was happening there, it was a, a place, it's not a prison, but a place where they keep a, 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 an accompanied minor who come to the United States as a teenager, like an age but before 18. From a five to 16, or a little bit 17, you can live here instead of bringing you to jail. Just imagine for you going to France, right? And then something wrong with your passport. When you go on a vacation with your mom and dad, and there's something wrong with your passport, 
your family got arrested, and for the send your mom and dad in prison, and the you for the send since you were teenage for the send you here. So, in this place, I don't like the condition. You know, I never ask permission for anything. I never do my laundry. See, so and here, if if you talk about the stuff. What we teach here in the United States, you have to be able to express yourself, right? Make your voice heard. Don't be afraid. You have to be brave. If you see somebody is being abused, don't look away. You have to do something about it because that's your constitutional right, right? That's what we teach here, free speech. You have to talk anything. Just don't call people names because for that became something else. I didn't like the condition in this place. I saw one kid from a Jamaica recording herself because that's what emotional sick for children were becoming. All right? Me being a politician kid, I said, I'm going to do something about this. I call Amnesty International. With the help of my social worker, I'm doing this at the age of 16. I don't speak a language. I've uh, translated from a Canada, speaking French. He understand me, but I was having trouble understanding him. I was like, hey, what is this guy trying to tell me in French? Because when we speak, it's so different French. You know, French is so different between me and him. So I call Amnesty International through my uh, social worker. The facility, the immigration said, no, we don't want Amnesty International here. These people kind of pop, people going to publicize stuff. I said, okay. I found a way to bring them in the facility anyway. <coughs> Amnesty International people became my social worker. I said, okay, this is my social worker. But secretly, I was working with them, exposing what was going on in the facility. Who was president in 2002 in the United States? George Bush. George Bush heard that abuse was going on in that place. Guess what George Bush did? Executive order, he closed that place. My face was in the news of the country. People were talking about that. So for we closed that place because the abuse was happening. Today, the place is still existed, but remember, you come here with your family, something wrong with the passport, they don't separate people anymore. They keep you together with your family in this place. So therefore, your mom don't have to go to jail anymore, your daddy don't have to go to jail, just because of you, you are minor, so we don't want to keep your family together. So places still exist, but for they have those kind of, you know, law changes. So. They close a place. I don't have a family. I don't have any friends in the U.S. Where I'm going to go? Force a home in Philadelphia. You guys know where our first home is, right? I went to for, force a home. You know, I don't know. You know, my, my opinion on forcing home in the United States is a little bit negative because of my experience. But it's not everybody has experience. It's just my uh, minority opinion. I went to foster home. I was in Philadelphia. I played soccer in high school, all that kind of stuff. And uh, when I turned 18 years old, I came in a place called Friendship House in Philadelphia because the government was paying my foster home so they could keep me there. Because, hey, I, I'm a human, right? I have to eat. I have to be clothed, right? So for the government paying for that, make sure for they buy my bed, my school books, for they buy me a soccer ball, 